Ladies and gentlemen, Salamite back with another video. Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about kind of bodybuilding versus powerlifting. We've covered some of the differences. We're going to kind of summarize and go over those and go into maybe one of the other biggest differences because in my opinion they are closely related. But there are a couple things that we'll need to change in our training if you want to focus purely on hypertrophy or purely on strength. Be sure to do me a favor. Give this thing a thumbs up. All your support recently has been absolutely sick on the channel. Uh, it really means a lot for you guys to be watching. Uh, giving a thumbs up, commenting below. So uh, I really do appreciate that. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. You guys allow me to uh, continue to work harder at being a better person, a better coach, a better content creator, uh, and live the life I do because of you guys. Uh, and I really am forever grateful. So I thank you guys for that. Um, comment below what topics you want me to cover in the next upcoming videos. New videos Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Buckle down. Uh, let's dig in. So well, as I said, we get a lot of support and comments on a YouTube channel, but you know how YouTube goes. I, I actually feel it's gotten a l slightly less toxic, to be honest, over the last couple of years. Like it used to be so ridiculously toxic, and then now the toxicity is kind of streamlined, um, and they're more a matter of fact. Like it used to just be like, Mike, you got a big nose. Mike, you're weak, shut up. Or like, Mike, your mom's dumb. Or something like something so left field. And, or like sometimes they would attack you deeper, but it like had nothing to do with what was going on. Now the toxicity is like there, like someone said, I'm not aesthetic or something. I'll read that comment later if you guys are into people hating on me. Um, but, but, but this one, I'm not sure if it's a kid being toxic or if he just doesn't know how this training thing needs to go. Uh, and, and that's why I'm covering it in the video because I think a lot of people follow certain fitness professionals that are more in tune with being motivational than they are with helping you towards your goals. And now motivation is great. Everybody likes to, likes to watch Rocky Five and get a little fired up at night. Um, but for you to be optimal and make the most progress possible, um, I think we need to focus in on the things that are gonna get us there and not just focus in on the rah-rah. Hopefully that makes sense. So uh, the comment is, workouts should be intense. You should be pushing yourself to the absolute limit every set. If you're not, you shouldn't go to the gym. Uh, and so that's what makes me think slightly of a troll because he's like, well, if you're not going all out, you shouldn't go to the gym. And hopefully we all know by now that's just not the case. Whether you want to look better, be healthier, whatever it might be, I think that even doing the smallest bit is better than doing nothing. And, and, and whoever says opposite is just wrong. Um, you don't ruin your diet by having a donut at night. Uh, you don't. Uh, uh, it's, it's still worth doing a five minute walk or a five minute bicycle or even just one set of chin ups than it is doing nothing. Um, all of that, it's better to park far away at the grocery store and walk further to the grocery store than it is to, to, to wait 10 minutes to get the front row. Every little bit does count. So that's first ixnay. Uh. Second thing, all this motivation, rah, rah. I, I try to keep it as real as I can with you guys. And that bullshit really pisses me off because I think it's just people creating content and doing things because they know that that's what's popular or that's what will get the clicks or that's what gets the average man going seeing some guy you know all oiled up doing push-ups or whatever it might be like i could do that uh i don't want to do that i'm not comfortable with that and what i'd rather do is give you the tools to set up your discipline your schedule your routine to have a successful life a healthy life to have a balanced life and so um i'm a little bit like jaded tainted whatever angry at some of that stuff because it it's so full on the internet everyone's a freaking motivational speaker everyone's a life coach but then in the background their life's absolute shambles they're not happy uh they're, they they don't have it figured out and trust me uh I go through the lowest lows, I go through the highest highs, and my shit's also far from put together, and I've talked about that in many vlogs here with my anxiety and things that I deal with, um, it's a part of life, but I think always just shouting in someone's face to dig deep and want it as much as you breathe isn't the way uh, that we can help each other and kind of find ground. I'm really trying to teach and help you guys reach your goals. So when we're talking about bodybuilding, powerlifting, the differences, the main difference are would, this is the summary. Powerlifting, you have to squat bench dead. And you have to do it to the, 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 the rules, the qualifications, exactly how they say in the federation you compete in. Bodybuilding, there's no rules on what lifts you do or how you do them. Uh, the only rule is get as conditioned as you can, build some muscle. And for the casual of both, who's, you know, let's not even put it into a sport perspective, someone who wants to be stronger in the power lifts, squat bench dead, you still have to squat bench dead. 
someone who just wants to look better, feel better, uh, get a little bit leaner, build some muscle can do absolutely any kind of lift they want. Um, and I, I'm also anti snowflake. I'm anti a lot of things in this video. I apologize if I'm sounding negative. I'm not meaning to, I'm just saying, uh, I'm anti snowflake in a sense. Um, but we all are not potentially made to squat bench deadlift perfectly for a very long time under very heavy load um, and feel great. Some of those movements just don't feel great to people depending on how we're built, uh, past injuries, etc. cetera. Um, and the benefit of hypertrophy and kind of the bodybuilding lifestyle is that you can just switch those movements. Uh, flat barbell bench doesn't feel good. I'm gonna do flat dumbbell or I'm gonna do incline dumbbell or I'm gonna do dips, right? We've talked about this in many, many videos. The exercise variation of bodybuilding is infinite um, and it's all made so you could feel the muscle better uh, don't get hurt and still progressively overload in those lifts where in the squat bench dead there are variations you can use to get stronger but you're pretty much stuck in those movements at some point you got to get better at those movements um, the last piece or maybe not only last piece but one of the other big pieces um, is the fatigue managing fatigue and how close to maybe failure or the rpe scale we may handle in, uh, in bodybuilding or hypertrophy and in powerlifting now in powerlifting, um, going to absolute failure or going to failure often or failing at all is probably not optimal for your goals. Knowing your limits is one thing, but actually missing lifts often or going to a 9.9, 9.5 RPE probably isn't optimal <clears throat> to do uh, even weekly, monthly, maybe even uh, every couple of months for the majority of intermediate or advanced lifters. There's gonna be too much fatigue and recovery, um, too much risk to reward, uh, and we also have to have a lot of downtime on those main heavy lifts because we're handling the most amount of weight that we can with a squat bench deadlift. That we need lower RPEs or less intense days uh, to practice um, being better at the movement, our motor patterns, uh, the technical aspect of those lifts. Now bodybuilding, you know, if you wanna build biceps, volume, um, is uh, in progressive overload is a large factor um, but there's a lot of research that shows getting closer to failure um, grinding out some reps or pushing through some reps um, the muscular fatigue does obviously promote protein synthesis and hypertrophy um, and that's much different right if you're going for a set of five on squats and you're using 90 95 percent and you're grinding out that last one the fatigue or the hangover that's going to be for the next couple workouts is going to mess up how you train uh, and the overall volume and work you can get in the, in the squat bench deadlift but if you do all that on a bicep curl obviously the risk is way lower um, you can, you're potentially just using less weight, a, a little safer range of motion, um, less of your body, right? It's, a, it's, it's an isolation exercise, not a compound. Uh, and the recoverability of doing 30 pound dumbbell curls for 12 and squeaking one out is much different than me doing a 500 pound squat for five to 10 reps uh, and squeaking one out, if that makes sense. And so those are the other two things. This guy's talking about a couple things in the comment, um, but he, he's right in some sense. It, to be optimal in um, you know, chasing down hypertrophy, uh, bodybuilding, uh, if that is the number one goal, going closer to failure or even to failure here and there, depending on the exercise, the variation of the muscle, uh, the body part is um, not necessary, but it can help promote that hypertrophy. Where I'm, and, Powerlifting, I literally just never, I just say don't miss. Like the goal is not to miss, it's a sport. Uh, it's a make or a miss. In bodybuilding, there is no make or misses. Personally, uh, in my current training, I obviously have a little bit of both. I'm learning how to weight lift, so uh, there are just misses because of technical stuff, not because of muscular stuff. In my um, powerlifting or the strength side, my pulls and my, and my squats, uh, I'm, I'm hanging out at you know RPEs, eights, uh, I want to stay fresh enough to get my weightlifting in, but still kind of keep some of that strength base, um, some of the motor pattern recruitment, um, some of the muscular uh, hypertrophy will be there just from the volume uh, and the frequency that I'm doing in those lifts, which are still factors in building muscle. You can build muscle not going to fatigue or going to failure, but uh, again, it may help. Uh, in the hypertrophy side, uh, again, I'm doing that push-pull kind of on my off days or after my weightlifting, uh, and I do get a little bit closer to failure. You know, I'm doing a dumbbell press. I'm doing three pretty hard sets. Uh, adding a little bit of load um, and I will get one or two squeakers in there. Same thing with uh, kind of my lat pull downs or my chin ups, uh, something like a bicep curl, tricep curl, or even a, a, a lateral raise. And I do feel some fatigue in there and it may have some small effects on my weightlifting and powerlifting. But overall, again, because they're smaller muscle groups, smaller joints, uh, less weight that I'm actually using, uh, the overall is going to be a lot less taxing on my system and hold me back a lot less.
Rather than if I was trying to build my legs maximally, uh, I might do a leg press or a lunge or a Bulgarian split squat and go a lot closer to failure because then I'm not worried about the load on the bar or the performance. There is no make or miss in that case. Hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, leave your comments below, questions. We'll cover them in the next videos. I really do appreciate you guys. Silent Mike, I'm out here. Catch you in the next one.